Hey folks, Scott Kelby here from Kelby One, the most awesome place to learn Lightroom. And today we're going to do something I haven't done in a while. We're going to do a from flat to fabulous. We're going to take an image from like straight out of the camera all the way through to the final image. Now, uh, there are bracketed images here on screen, but we are not going to do an HDR, even though I bracketed the five images. And this was taken uh, at a resort down in St. Lucia called Jade Mountain, and it's a pretty fabulous resort. And I was teaching a workshop as a guest at Joe McNally's workshop there I was one of his guest instructors and uh he put us up in a really nice place <laughs> so here's some shots so, so here's the normal exposure two stops underexposed one stop underexposed one stop overexposed and two stops now the reason i'm just i showing you the five is because if you did bracket i'll just show you what the hdr would do but we're not going to do hdr for this tutorial let me just select you only need in lightroom the uh, darkest and the brightest so you don't need all these other ones and we'll go photo photo merge and choose HDR but again that we're not going to do HDR I just want to show you why you might want to consider HDR so uh, here is just the here let's align these I think I was hand holding and in fact I'm pretty sure I was let's hit merge and I just want you to see what the difference is between these three photos okay so this is our our two stops under this is our two stops over so watch this is our two stops under this is our two stops over that's the combination of the two see how you see all the shadow detail and all this kind of stuff in here and all it all comes together so there's the overexposed and the underexposed it blends the two to give you that but we're not going to do that here's what we're going to do we're just going to use the regular exposure we're going to pretend that all of these others don't even exist. All right, all we're gonna do is work on this one photo right here. So this is our starting point. Uh, the very first thing that I would do uh, is, to, is to do some lens correction. This was taken with a wide angle lens. I can see like some of the things are kind of bowing. They're like not straight and the whole picture just is kind of a little wonky. So let's go to the lens corrections panel here in Lightroom. We're gonna to go to the profile and all we're gonna do is choose enable profile correction. Now that's not gonna fix all of the woes, but that'll fix a lot of them. Just turn it on. It finds the camera that you shot it with and the lens that you shot it with and it does. Look at the difference. I'm gonna to toggle it on and off so you can see. See how it was kind of bowed out? And now it's the columns are much straighter. Everything's much straighter. Then I'll go to the transform panel. All right. And then we're going to click on auto under the upright feature. We're just going to choose auto and you'll see that it kind of look at how it straightened it out. Look. All right. Now this is going to sound weird, but it looks still a little tick, a little crooked to me. So I'm going to go to the rotate here and I'm going to rotate it just a little bit right there I just it, it to me it looked a little little bit funky all right so now at least the image is kind of straightened out now let's go to the basic panel which is really misnamed it should be the essentials panel and here's what I would do first uh, you can actually now click the auto button if you have the current version of Lightroom CC the auto button actually is an okay starting place for the first time like ever they redid the math and it's much better so let's click auto and see what we got no, not bad, right? <laughs> remember, remember that used to be the overexposed button, and now it actually looks fairly good. Uh, I do think it went a little too far with the exposure. I think the sky's kind of a little bit too washed out. So I'm going to pull that back just a little bit. I want to get that sky looking better. And then, of course, we're losing some detail in here, so I'm going to crank the shadows a little bit. All right, that's not bad. We're we're pretty good there. Um, I do want to do something with the sky. The sky is is not awesome. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go down to the HSL panel, right, right here. And it, that stands for hue, saturation, and luminance. We're going to click on the luminance. And this is a trick that we've used for years to get skies really nice and blue. Go down to the blue slider. And we're, again, we're under luminance. That's really important. Luminance. And you're going to drag the blue slider to the left. Watch the sky. Up. There's your blues. All right, so we're going to bring some blue in there, and that certainly, I think, looks a lot better. Now, if you really wanted to, to tweak the sky a lot, what you could do is go up. Let's go back up here to the, to the graduated filter. So it's the fourth one here right under the histogram. We're going to click on it. We're going to make it a little darker. We're going to darken the exposure. Now, make sure none of your other sliders have been moved or are out there. We just want to move one. So to make them all zero, 
go here and click directly on the word effect and it watch all the sliders when you click directly on effect Wah! it straightens them all out all right now let's lower the exposure so when i use the tool it's going to make wherever i start dark and then it's going to graduate down to clear so let's do that we're going to darken the sky come down here and it graduates when it gets to the ocean kind of too clear and you can make it as dark as you want and you could even cheat a little bit go over here to the temperature and put a little more blue in there as well now the problem with this is you can actually see you see how it kind of it's also darkening this part of the building it's bark darkening these columns and all but if you have the latest version of Lightroom you can get down here to range mask choose color from the little pop-up menu then what you're going to do is get this eyedropper and you're going to click and drag and say avoid I want to keep these colors but avoid those on the columns and stuff and it will mask itself here look at that did you see that did you see how well it masked that area oh my gosh I just clicked and dragged it look at this I love this tool it's just amazing so let me show you the difference see what it did to the sky but give it a second here but and the clouds look a lot better but it didn't paint over this part of the building and those it just it completely masked it out so i just think that's really pretty amazing okay so that's just a really cool new thing in lightroom um <clears throat> now i'm going to step back and just kind of look at, at what else is wrong with the image well i think it's still a little dark in here and people just love to see that detail that you would normally see with your eyes people love to see that so i if i'm going to be accused of anything it's going to be bringing out too much of the shadow area so let's just i'm okay with that because people do like it i'm going to click right here on the adjustment brush this time i'm going to move it to where it's brighter and i'm going to leave auto mask off for just a minute and we're going to paint over these areas to brighten this part up here brighten right in there and it's going to spill over the edges a little bit i'm okay with that and i'm going to brighten all of this down here and down there it's kind of dark down there let's get that walkway there let's get all of this down here maybe that and there we can see a whole lot better to those areas now when i get near the edges and stuff this is where i'll turn auto mask on so that way i can kind of paint over here without without being worried about painting onto the ocean as long as that little plus sign in the middle doesn't stray over onto the ocean it won't paint over that let's make our brush a little smaller using the left bracket key on my keyboard the left bracket key makes your brush smaller the right bracket key makes it larger and i'm just going to kind of bring out some more detail areas over here just brighten them up so we can see them and right over there there we go actually we could go ahead i have the auto mask on but we could go ahead see how much slower it goes when you have auto mask on that's why i turn it off a lot because it slows down your brush all right that all looks pretty good actually the whole thing looks pretty good let's just go back here to the basic panel and maybe crank the contrast up a little bit that'll make the colors more vibrant and make everything a little more contrasty and i think we're pretty close let's go down here to detail and add a bunch of sharpening let's increase the sharpening amount by quite a bit i'm going to jump up to like 80 which is a lot of sharpening uh i went i said 80 and then went to 72 like that how about 76. and let me think if there's anything else that we might want to do i'm not crazy about what's going on over here but that's you'd have to crop it out and i can see a little bit of chromatic aberration so let's go get rid of that let's go to the lens corrections panel let's turn on remove chromatic aberration and then let's go to manual over here and let's increase the amount of removing green aberrations and purple aberrations and that'll help us a little bit some of our aberrations problem but i think we're we're pretty good the one thing i might do i might have to jump over to photoshop and get rid of this pole and I know that it's really there, but it's, isn't it kind of distracting this pole there? And I doubt the tool here will do a good job. Let's just make it really small. And the reason why I doubt it will do a good job because it's not a very good tool. Let me set it back to 50 for the feather. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than the pole. It is possible to work, but I don't hold a lot of hope. Yeah, see how it kind of smeared the tent and stuff? It's. Let me see if I can do a little better yeah it's not awesome what if i put it on over here on the tent 
moved it up a little bit and see if I can yeah it's uh, it's this is an easy thing to fix in Photoshop and a stinky thing in Lightroom and it's why we have Photoshop well look at that there's the uh, there's the before apparently and here's the after there's the before and the after so I think it's quite a bit better now if you feel the image is too colorful and I think it is on the verge of too colorful uh, let's go to the basic panel and uh, as part of clicking that auto it increased the vibrance 18 I'm gonna take the vibrance down to zero and just take a little of the edge off that color I don't want it to look all HDR -y. I'm gonna move the uh, the vibrance down to zero and the saturation down to zero and yeah that, le that looks better let's do a little side by side so there you see the difference. You can really kind of make that image sing without doing an HDR or any of that kind of stuff. All right. Hey, if you like this kind of stuff, go over to KelbyOne.com. Uh, you can now join for $9.99 a month or go for our pro, pro plan and get a whole bunch more. But you can get in really, really inexpensively and start learning tons of Lightroom stuff from some of the best Lightroom instructors in the world. And I would love to see you over there and as part of our community. So don't just subscribe to something, be a part of something, be a member, be a part of something big and have members all over the world that want to help you and help you grow in your, your Lightroom journey. And so go check it out at KelbyOne.com. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you next time.